it's pretty darn cool. All the work that goes on behind the scenes when computer networks are used. For example, in our previous few nuggets, we took a look at the concept of a protocol stack, how the protocols work together in a cooperative effort. So for example, if Bob is going to a website, he opens up his browser, and his browser behind the scenes is going to use an application layer service such as HTTP. Now, HTTP gets a little help from its friend at the transport layer, including TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, and that information is added. The ports involved and the details regarding the transport layer protocol. And then, logically, layer three is going to add the IP information. Now, let's pause there for a minute. Whose IP address are we going to put in that layer three header in this information that we're requesting? Well, Bob's computer is going to put its own IP address as the source IP address and the server it's trying to reach as the destination IP address. So it adds that at layer three, and then it hands it down in an Ethernet network. It hands it down to layer two, which is going to add the layer two addresses. That's the burned in network interface card addresses on Bob's computer as the source and the server as the destination layer two MAC address or physical address. Now, let's stop the truck there just for a moment. How in the world does Bob's computer that's on the network know what the server's layer two Ethernet address is? Do they have like a secret handshake or something? How do they find out? And the answer to that is a little protocol called ARP. And that's what I'd like to chat with you about in this video is how a computer discovers another computer's layer two address on the same network using ARP. So just for a tad of repetition, let's confirm what we're looking at. This is Bob's computer right here, computer two. And this is the server that Bob's trying to go to with a web request. So computer two's layer three IP address is 10.1.0.10. That's an example of like its street name and house number for this computer, computer two, and the server, who's also on the same local area network, its IP address is 10.1.0.111. And at layer two, I have their respective addresses here as well. So computer two is ending in 778899, while the server's burned in address, the media access control or MAC address is ending in 678322. I'll put arrows down there as well. So if this snapshot of a request that Bob is in the process of sending over to server two includes uh, the application layer, it has the HTTP information for web services at layer four, it includes the TCP information, including the well-known destination port of 80 for HTTP. At layer three, it includes the source and destination IP addresses for Bob and the server's computers respectively. And then at layer two, it's got the ethernet addresses, Bob's source, Ethernet address as well as the server's destination Ethernet address. So this request before it leaves computer two, he has all that information. And if we interviewed computer two, we said, "Hey, hey, computer two, uh, how is it, how is it that you discovered the server's layer two address? You have it here in this request you're sending him. How did you learn it?" And computer two would simply say, "I did this. I asked." What do you mean you asked? Well. If I didn't know what that server's layer two address was on the same local network, I would just go ahead and send a request, a broadcast, and everybody would see that broadcast. And then hopefully the server, when it sees that broadcast, would reply back to computer two saying, oh, I saw your request. You're looking for the layer two address associated with my IP address. Here it is. Go ahead and use it and let's talk. And the set of rules regarding how to ask for a layer two address of another device on your same local network and get a response is a set of rules identified on an ethernet network as address resolution protocol, or as his friends call them, good old ARP. And if the next question on our minds is, hey, can you show us that? The answer would be absolutely yes. I happen to have at uh, my fingertips right here, a protocol analyzer capture, a packet capture that shows the ARP request and the ARP response. So this first entry right here, if we open up the payload, it's an ARP request, an address resolution protocol request. And if we expand the payload of this ARP request, here's what Bob's computer is sending out on the network. It's sending out information saying, hey, I'm making a request. I'm looking for anybody who's currently using this IP address, 10.1.0.111. And on every network, <laughs> there should only be one device using a specific address. And it's sent as a broadcast. So everybody on the local network is going to hear this request. And then the server who owns that IP address is going to respond back and include its layer two information, its MAC address, its Ethernet address, so that Bob's computer can learn that information. And that reply is right here in our second entry. So if we click on the second entry, this is being sent from the server who's saying, hey, my IP address is 10.1.0.111. And if I'm not mistaken, you just ask for my layer two address. And here it is. 
So armed with that information about the layer two address of the server, Bob's computer can now send a packet with all those details, including the source and destination layer two address. So this frame of data can be forwarded to the correct destination on the local network. As a result of our time together in this nugget, if someone comes up to us and says, hey, how exactly does one computer learn the layer two address of another device on the same local network? We know the three letter answer, address resolution protocol, also called ARP. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.